Okay, so Thank you. 
will sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have made him the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his indication in the heart of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. We make joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of the melody. With the trumpet and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the name of the Lord. Let the Roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the clouds clap their hands, let the fields sing together for joy. At the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you, all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Our epistle reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. What then are we to say as gained by Abram, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abram was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abram believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works wages, are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of if it is the adherent of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null, and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gave life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, 
Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who comes from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you about earthly things, and you do not believe. How can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Word of God. May we reflect for him 332, oh my goodness.
we may be an Excel person. For those of you who aren't familiar, Excel is a before and after school recreation program that happens right on site inside of the school. One of the things I loved about my morning there was the sunrise. At the back door of the school, where the Excel entrance is, looks out towards the harbor, and we're up at the top of the hill. In the morning, I got to watch the sun come up over the water, and there was often this beautiful pink hue that would fill the skyline. As I sat with Psalm 98, I thought about the sunrise. I considered how this could be viewed as creation, praising God. Well, I enjoy the sunrise and it provides light to my day. Perhaps it's not for me or for our pleasure. That our pleasure from the sunrise is just a secondary outcome. Perhaps all this is to sing a new song to the Lord. The earth, the skies, the stars, all in great harmony, praising God. And because it's praising God, and it's mirroring to God all the marvelous things that God has done, it becomes a thing of beauty, not only for God, but for us too. It's beautiful for us because it occurs as a response to goodness itself. The sunrise, who is reflecting God's beauty, is beautiful because God is beautiful. I continued to carry Psalm 98 with me throughout my last couple weeks at Excel. I became curious about where else I could see the world praising God. And sure enough, I found God and God's praise in a new and surprising way. I want to tell you a little bit about my Zay has pretty severe autism. He is verbal, but minimally, minimally so. When spending time with Zay, it's easy to see it as a solitary experience. When you talk, you feel like you're talking to yourself. He never really engages you. I often find spending time with Zay to be a quiet, introvert, recharge time. But on this particular day, I thought to myself, where is the expression of praise here? For the little boy who often appears frustrated and agitated, whose parents always seem exhausted, overwhelmed, and frustrated. And there seems to simply be great brokenness for Zay and for his family. Yet as I looked closer at Zay and his playlist training, I began to see that Zay, who experiences the world differently than I do, takes in his surroundings in a vastly different fashion. As I sat on the floor next to Zay asking about his trains, he is a huge Thomas the Train fan. I noticed that he would bring his face right down to the ground, so his eyes were almost touching the train tracks that he had laid out on the floor. And he looked at the tracks with such delight, and he moved the tracks, the trains over the tracks with this beautiful smile on his face. I began to wonder, can they see something in the tracks that I don't see? <laughs> And they see the tracks crazy. I wondered to myself if I should get down and take a closer look. Of course, I looked around first to ensure no other adult would see me do it. And then I, too, put my face right up to the tracks, just like they, to get a closer look. Now, I will never know if I saw what they was seeing. But I noticed that as he moved the trains, the tracks just 
gently held the wheel in place. And it would correct the path when the wheels wanted to go off course. The wheels were still free to move forward and backward on the tracks. And they could be picked up off the tracks. But when placed in the train tracks, the wheels were tenderly held in a place of safety. There was almost a sense of love and care in the presence. The train tracks were protecting the trains and allowing them to move with freedom, either forward or backward. By the time I brought my head back up, there was a group of kids about to pass by Zay and I in our train set. Zay was totally unfazed by their dancing feet around him, and he continued to keep his eyes down at the level of the tracks. This is when I recall the gospel reading for today. While potential peril was all around Zay, stomping feet who could have busted the train, the track, or hurt him, Zay was focused on the correcting track, ensuring a path forward. He seemed to know, despite falling feet, he was safe and the trains were safe. They seemed to be already living in the light. He was Christ, and I was Nicodemus coming in the dark, seeking to understand. Or I was like Abram, asking God how it can be, waiting for my blessing. And then almost as if they knew what I was reflecting on, after the feet had passed and it was quiet again, they reached for my hand. And he held it gently for a moment. And then he said, Get up! Get up! They need us! I don't know what needed us. The trains, I guess, as he guided me to a new set of trains to put on the track. And again, he showed me, get up, get up, they need us. I took a job at Excel to ensure I had income, to ensure I could take care of my kids. I didn't take the position because it was a dream job or because I saw it as ministry, but they was right. Get up, get up, they need us. Well, my position was not one of the ministry at itself, it still called for me to praise God for the marvelous things that God has done. Open the news on any morning, and singing praises to God after reading the headlines will feel like the last thing we want to do. But it also makes us know that this world is in desperate need this world is anxious to hear goodness. It is acutely aware of pain and anguish, but God's love is much more out of view and out of focus. Get up, get up, they need us. Zay is right. The world needs us. They need us to see and to sing the praise. The world needs us to recall and to reflect and to announce the goodness of God. The goodness that has been given to everyone and everything. The world needs to hear the joyous praise, the boisterous noise of the presence of the living Lord. The world needs us to see and to share God's presence on this fast-paced train that we seem to be riding through war zones and darkness. Our neighbors need us to get up and share what we have seen, to share the living God who dwells within us. But more than that, the praise needs to be given to God, because God is in us, and God is love. And the only way that we share in God's love and goodness and to share it with our neighbors is by being in relationship with God, being in relationship with goodness itself. 
if we can't acknowledge the miraculous things that God has done in our lives, then we likely don't have much of a relationship with the living God. Get up, get up, they need us. Is this what the sun says each morning as it creates the beautiful view? May the prophetic words of the day encourage you in the coming weeks to find and to share all the marvelous things that the Lord has done. Now to the ruler of all the world, undying and visible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our lives are blessed Let us trust that goodness to sustain us, and so offer God our gifts to share with the world in need with glad hearts. <laughs>
thank you for the energy to focus on things we can do day by day. Putting your love and care to work in community and creation. By the power of your spirit, bless us with the insight and passion to act in hope. May our wisdom light us in all things. Attentive God, we bring our concerns for the world to you in these uncertain times. We think of Abraham and Sarah setting off to an unknown land. And God, we pray for people who, like them, are on the move. For those who are seeking safety and shelter, fleeing violence and oppression. For those settling into a new home or community. For those who must travel whatever the condition. God, our companion, walk with us on the way. We think of the psalmist who seeks to sing a new song to the Lord. And so we pray for the people who are struggling to sing, for those who are seeking help for the earth itself as its fragile balances are threatened, for those seeking help to make ends meet as bank balances are threatened, For those seeking help for vulnerable people to right the balance of justice. God, our companion, walk with us on the way. We think of Nicodemus turning to Jesus with questions in his heart. So we pray for people who are seeking answers, for those with health challenges, seeking diagnosis and treatment, for those who are researching problems and policies, seeking to better our common life. For those who are wondering if you exist, O oh God, wondering if you have a purpose for them. God, our companion, walk with us on the way. God of love and mercy, as we bring to our hearts and minds those who have come before us to speak your meaning for our conversation. For those who we know for a variety of reasons are in need of your love, grace, justice, and joy. Jesus calling his disciples and their leaders, challenging us all to follow him in love and faithfulness. For he is our companion on the way who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
as we prepare to take our worship out to the doors and into the week and into the world. May you join our voices together in harmony and in prayer and in 209, a love that will not be. Son and the 